introduce you. Great. So it's a great pleasure to welcome Anwar Artiel. We're making history here. I don't think it's very, one of the great benefits of COVID is that now we have the opportunity to have a nine months pregnant speaker, uh, which probably has never happened before in conference history. So here you are, Anwar. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for the invitation. Okay, so we're good to go. I will share my screen. Uh, tack. Up. And tack. Well, so thank you again for the invitation. I'm glad that the conference is virtual and that I could um, participate. I hope I'll make it till the end, at least of my own talk. And uh, this talk will be about several bimodules. And uh, I will try to present you a proposition of, uh, of a generalization of uh, several category, but now for cyclic groups. And uh, this work that I present today is uh, in collaboration with Thomas Gopi. So as a fir first part of my talk, I will recall a bit uh, what classical Zorgal bimodules are, but very quickly because I assume most of you know, know much about that. And, and some questions that uh, together with Thomas we ask ourselves and that we could at least partially answer. And in, uh, and in uh, the second part of the talk, I will, I will focus on this uh, generalization of Zorgal's category for the cyclic case. So let's start basic uh, with the Coxeter system uh, uh, that I denote WS with S a set of simple reflections. So since we want to generalize all Zorgel story to the cyclic case, the example of the classical story I will give you are very basic, meaning type AN, meaning symmetry group. And even more basic than that, I will, I will, uh, I will go then to, uh, to type A1, meaning the symmetric group uh, S2. So if my Coxeter group is a symmetric group, so of type uh, AN, I have uh, N plus one simple uh, reflections, which are the adjacent transposition. And uh, we have uh, the famous presentation of this group. So our reflections are reflections, meaning the square to one. Either indices are distant, they commute, and otherwise they satisfy a length three braid relation. Associated to this Coxeter system, we can define the Hiwaori Ecker algebra, which is an algebra over polynomial ring, uh, Laurent polynomial ring with one parameter and integral coefficient. And uh, and uh, we can define it as, uh, as a bit de deformation of, uh, of the group algebra of our Coxeter group. Simply now the, the generators, instead of being reflections, uh, they, instead of squaring to one, they satisfy a quadratic relation. And now we, we call them these the standard generators and denote them T index SI. And uh, concerning the other relations, they are not deformed, so so we still have uh, we still have the same braid relations uh, among the, the standard generator TSI as we had among the SI in the Coxeter group. Okay, uh, it might be handy to work with actually another set of uh, generators than the than the standard one, namely the Kazanusis generators that we denote here bi, which are just uh, b to the minus one times one plus our standard generator TSI. And in this case, the, stand, the quadratic relations among them becomes uh, bi square is just uh, bi times b plus b minus one. But this time the braid relation, uh, the braid relations change. So in the case of Sn plus one, when the standard generator were commuting, now the Kazanustich still are, meaning when the indexes are far apart. But, um, but the, when the braid relation was of length three, now, uh, now it's, uh, it's different, and namely we have an, an, extra, an extra term appearing. So our length three guy plus bi plus one is equal to the other plus bi. 
Okay. And uh, we have two uh, particular bases that, uh, that we want to consider when, uh, when we are studying echo algebras. The first one is the standard basis. So, uh, so uh, it's indexed by the element of the Coxeter group and, uh, and uh, the standard generator of uh, such an element is just given by the products of the standard generators associated to the reflection that appear in, the, in a reduced expression of the element. And the other one, which is uh, the kasdan lustig basis, and I won't say much about it, just telling you that it's a, it's a basis with very nice property and, uh, and containing a lot of uh, representation theoretical information. Okay. And now let's turn to, uh, to Zergel bimodules. So I will not motivate really the study of Zergel bimodules, just maybe say in a sentence, like if you are a topologist, you might, you might find them useful to construct uh, categorical representations of, uh, of braid groups or homological invariant soft knots. While if you're more of a, of a representation theorist, you're happy because they encode a lot of, combi of Kazanustich combinatorics. So that's all for the motivations. And, um, and so, so this story can be, can be told in, in much more generality, but here I will go simple. And, uh, and I will just take the geometric representation of my Coxeter group over R, meaning uh, R vector space of, uh, of dimension, the number of uh, simple reflection of my Coxeter system. Uh, and, uh, and so these simple reflections act uh, simply as follows. S of ET is ET plus two cosine pi over MST ES, where MST is the coefficient of the Coxeter matrix associated to the Coxeter system, meaning it's the number, the integral number that predicts the length of, uh, of the braid relations among, uh, among simple reflections. Okay, then I will, um, I will consider R to be the ring of regular function on B, meaning just the, poly the polynomial functions on B star, and this ring inherits an action of my Coxeter group. And uh, I will consider it as graded. So this will be, our, the Zergel bimodules will be R bimodules, and uh, R is graded, and, uh, and the R bimodules that we look at are also graded bimodules and we set uh, B star to be in degree two. So now we are done with SN, we go to S2. Because remember that we want at the end of the day to generalize to the, to the cyclic group. So if my Coxeter group is S2, then I have just one uh, simple reflection, V is of dimension one, and this reflection acts by multiplication by minus one. And R is just uh, the ring of uh, polynomials in, in uh, one variable with a ring coefficient. Very well. Uh, and now we can define circle bimodules. So for any element of my Coxeter group, I will consider three objects. Uh, first, uh, R upper index W which is a subalgebra of elements that are invariant under the action of W on R. Then R uh, lower index W, which is an R by module, which is just R uh, as left module, but uh, where the action on the right is, uh, is uh, twisted by W. Often they are called standard by modules in the literature. So yeah, simply on the left we act by normal multiplication, and on the right, an element will act by multiplication by W of this element. Fair enough. And the third object associated to any element of my, of my uh, Coxeter group that I want to consider is a revert, reverse graph of, uh, of this element in uh, V cross V, meaning the pairs W, V, V uh, for all V in V. <laughs> Okay, then if I take a subset A of my Coxeter group, I will consider the ring of regular function which support the union 
of uh, all the graphs of, uh, of the elements inside my subset AE, okay? And since this, uh, this graph is a subset of B cross, this union of graph is a subset of B cross B, this means my, my ring O of A is a quotient of the ring of uh, regular function on V cross V, which is just isomorphic to uh, R tensor with itself, R meaning O of V, tensor with itself over real V. Okay, and in particular, uh, as, uh, as, as being a quotient of, of this one, it's generated by one tensor one, and hence it is an indecomposable graded R by module, whatever the subset A I choose. Okay, uh, now a uh, little remark. Uh, if for A I choose just the subset uh, given by uh, the unit element E and one reflection, I'm not saying simple reflection, I'm really saying reflection, then this is isomorphic to the tensor product of R with itself over the invariant ring uh, Rs, okay? While if for A I do even more simple than that, I choose just one element of my Coxeter group, then it is isomorphic to uh, my twisted uh, bimodule by uh, twisted by, by this element I picked. Okay, good. So let's see what's happening again for us S2. For S2, uh, uh, S was acting, uh, the, the, we have one unique reflection, S, which was acting by multiplication by minus one. So the invariant ring is just generated by X square and O of ES is, is uh, the, the tensor product of Rx with itself modulo x squared times one minus one times x squared. And it might be handy to write that as a quotient of a polynomial ring in two variables. That's, so that's isomorphic to, to, uh, to real polynomials in two variables, modulo x squared equals y squared. And here now the, the, the structure of R by module is given by, uh, so the left action is multiplication by x and the right action is multiplication by y. Similarly, if I take my, my twisted by module Rs, uh, but simply I, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, working with a polynomial ring in two variables, except that I identify x with minus y. Okay, very good. Um, now we are ready to define the category observable by modules. So it will be the Karubi envelope of the additive uh, monoidal table by grading shift uh, category generated by the sum by modules that I call BS, which are just R tensor R over the invariant RS shifted by one. And, and this for all simple reflections of my Coxeter. And so this is uh, the category of uh, Zergel bimodules associated to my Coxeter system because it depends on the choice of the simple reflections. Okay. And uh, a priori. And uh, just, uh, just a convention for the grading shift here. So if, uh, if uh, I'm shifting a bimodule M, a Z graded bimodule M by an integer P, its i factor is a, is a i plus p factor of the original bimodule. Okay, and then um, uh, we will consider the split protonic ring of uh, of this Zergel category, which is a which is a, a module over over the Laurent polynomial ring uh, with one uh, with one variable and in integral coefficients. And um, it has basis uh, isoclasses of, uh, of indecomposable objects of my category, up to shift, obviously. And, uh, and this, uh, so the, the ring structure comes from the tensor product and the, and the direct sum in the category. And the structure of module over this, uh, this Laurent polynomial ring comes from the autoequivalence of the category given by 
shifting the degree, meaning uh, the, the isoclass of M shifted by P is just in the Grotendieck ring uh, V to the P times the isoclass of M. Okay. Good. Let's go back to the example of A2, uh, A1, so S2. So this is all very basic, uh, surely for you, but uh, it's just to set up the classical story before going, uh, before going to, uh, to cyclic groups. Uh, so S2, uh, we have a group with two elements. Our ring is just a polynomial ring with one variable and real coefficient. My reflection acts by multiplication by minus one and my invariance is just a polynomial in X squared. So, since any polynomial can be written as a, uniquely as a polynomial in x squared plus x times another polynomial in x squared, it means r is just rs plus x times rs, meaning as rs module is just two copies of rs, one being shifted by minus two because we remember that x has degree two. Okay, very good, we keep that in mind. And now we want to see what happens if I tensor my unique generating by modules of the by module of the Zorgel category now with itself. So BS uh, times uh, BS is just uh, R times R times R over Rs shifted by two. And if the middle R I replace it by the decomposition I just mentioned. I get in the end two copies simply of BS, one being shifted by one and one being shifted by minus one. So at the end of the day, nothing really interesting happens when I take tensor powers of BS. I just get some copies of, uh, of him with different shifts. Okay, and so since it's my only generator of the category at the end of the day, uh, the indecomposable of the category are just R and NBS up to, up to shift and uh, isomorphism. This means my, uh, my Grotendieck ring has rank two, and if the isoclass of big BS, my generating by module, I, I denote it little bs, I see that uh, this, uh, this generator satisfy a quadratic relation that I recognize as the one satisfied by the um, kazan generators of the Ecker algebra. Very good. And that is true in wall and greater generality. And uh, that's a theorem of, uh, of Zergel and, uh, and in wall generality of Elias and Williamson, this categorification theorem that indeed we have uh, an isomorphism of, uh, of algebras over this, uh, this ring of uh, Laurent polynomial in between the Grotendieck ring of, uh, of the Zorgel category and the iwa orieke algebra associated to my Coxeter group. And, um, and uh, the isoclass of my generating bimodules correspond to the uh, generators of the Ecker algebra and shifting by one uh, corresponds to uh, multiplying by G. And better than that, uh, not, it, it's not only true for the kazan generators, but we recover the whole kazan basis of the Ecker algebra as, uh, as a set of indecomposable of the category uh, modulo, modulo grading shift and isomorphism. Okay, so that's uh, about it for the classical Zergel story. And uh, starting from here, I want to ask a couple of questions. The first one is the following. Okay, uh, let's consider two generalization, two quite natural generalization of the Zergel category. What happens if I take instead uh, as generating by modules instead of the one corresponding to simple reflections, all the by modules corresponding to 
all the reflections of, uh, of my Coxeter group. I, I, I recall you that, uh, that any reflection in the Coxeter group is just a conjugate of a simple reflection. So but what, what's happening when, uh, when I take those as set of generators? Very well, this, this gives me a generalized orgle category. What can I tell about that? And the other generalized orgle category that I want to consider is on top of those, uh, those bimodules indexed by, by all the reflections, I want to add, to add um, an, uh, a few more generating bimodules, namely the twisted ones for all the elements of the Coxeter group. And actually understanding one or the other um, is, a, is a problem of more or less same difficulty. And this difficulty is quite high. So, uh, so first question, what can we tell about these categories? Second question, and that's what will, uh, what will occupy us uh, in the second part of the talk is, well, I started with here with a Coxeter group, which is a, a, a real reflection group. What if I want to play the same game, but starting from a complex reflection group? Can I, can I define in a sensible way a Zorgel category associated to a complex reflection group? And what can I tell about it? Because defining something is fun, but uh, understanding it is another song. Okay. And uh, so I will just end the first part of my talk by giving you a very partial answer to the first question. And actually I will, I will just, uh, I will not really go into details, just tell you that this very partial answer exists and it's, it's, uh, it's only in type A2 for the symmetric group S3 and it's a resulting collaboration uh, with, uh, with Thomas Gobet also. And uh, so it, it's a little note where we, give a complete description of both these uh, generalized categories. We can parameterize their indecomposable objects and we give um, a presentation by generators and relations of the first one. And it turns out that, uh, so it's uh, of dimension 20 and it's isomorphic to uh, a quotient of the, the echo algebra of affine type A2. So it's a finite quotient of this uh, this, uh, this infinite affine echo algebra. So yeah, here I, I, I don't think I have much time to go into the details of, uh, of what parameterizes uh, the indecomposables and all that. But well, that was uh, the only case we managed to study properly, actually. Voila, and, um, and so in the second part of the, of the talk, I will, uh, I will turn to the second question and of course not for, for uh, any complex reflection group, but, uh, but I will propose uh, a definition of a Zorgel category for the simplest of the, refle the complex reflection groups, meaning the cyclic groups, and, and uh, explain you a bit uh, which results we got, uh, we got so far about this, uh, this uh, generalized category. So yeah, I think. I'm a bit early, but I will have a break now. Makes Great sense. place to stop. So, um, and we'll start again in, in five minutes at 10, at, at 28 of the hour. Okay. Meantime, please ask questions. I have questions, of course. <laughs> Okay. So, so what quotient of the affine Hecke category is this? Uh, so, uh, so you get uh, uh, a few extra relations. So you you take the the Kazanusti generators of uh, of the affine Hecke algebra, and the extra relations you get is um, uh, are 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 uh, when you sandwich uh, one of the generator. Uh, in between uh, another one, the same as sandwiching the third one, okay? And if you sandwich the product uh, of the two among, uh, uh, in between the third one, it's the same as uh, sandwiching them the other way around. Yeah. 
And this for all, all our three catalysis generators of the Apinec algebra, and uh, and and we get a, a category of uh, uh, we get a, an algebra of dimension twenty. And and when and we I go to the, to the sorry yeah. And I, uh, I have a question. What do you mean by the generalized categories? So, uh, what features of a category that may not be uh, holding these two questions? What uh, in, so in you which say case? the two generalized generalized uh, categories? Yes. So the word generalized. So some of the meaning, from... mean, meaning meaning that uh, mm -hmm. that now I take I take uh, more generators than than I had with the Zergel category. And uh, and actually, it 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 goes really wild. Uh, it goes really wild because the the only the only when you try to un understand the tensor products among among the this bigger set of uh, of generators, you you are not able to tell much. And and the only case where we where we could uh, we could describe these tensor products completely and, and get the, and the, get totally the description of the category is really for S3. I see, so they are actually categories, but how to make a presentation with more generators. That's yeah, more exactly, you, you add more, more uh, generating by modules to your category mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you, you, see, you see how it, how it goes. Because for the Coxeter group, you, okay, you, you can, uh, you generate it by the simple reflections or by by all the reflections and it doesn't change your group while now if you do that with a category it goes completely banana yeah i understand now thank you you said <clears throat> you said that the answering the first question and the second question are somehow the same yes could you say something about that uh, yes, because um, so if you uh, if you take the tensor product, you pick one reflection T and one uh, one uh, element of your group W. And if you look at the at the tensor product R W times B T, it's isomorphic to um, to be uh, associated to the reflection W T W minus one tensor R W. Okay, so you can put uh, all your twisted by module on one side, and uh, and what you're left is if is with uh, a tensor product of of some of uh, of some b's, except that now uh, your uh, your uh, your indexing reflection have been conjugated while you are sliding your uh, your twisted by modules on one side. So, thank you. Um, I think this is a good spot to resume. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Uh, hmm. Very well. So now we'll turn to, uh, to a, a definition of Zorgel category for cyclic groups. But first of all, let's, let's have a word on what are complex reflection groups. And um, uh, so these are subgroups of the general linear groups over C, and um, and we want them to be generated by not reflections anymore, but what we call pseudo reflections, which is uh, elements whose uh, whose uh, space of fixed points are still an hyperplane, but uh, we don't ask them to be of order two, but just to be of finite order. Okay, and these groups have been classified in the fifties by Shepard and Todd, and they consist in an in an infinite family with three natural parameters, G, D, E, E, N, and 37 excep exceptional groups. Okay, and uh, so today we'll focus on the cyclic group, which means uh, it's, it's uh, one infinite family corresponding at, uh, at E and N equals one. So it's G, D, one, one. Okay, and uh, the cyclic group of order two is already covered, that's uh, Zergel's case S2. And that's why I took this example uh, uh, 
until now because uh, because now we want to see how we can we can uh, generalize uh, the girl story for S2 to uh, to a group with a reflection of higher order. So we take W to be cyclic group of order D and we fix a generating reflection S of order D. And uh, we have a faithful one dimensional representation of this group that we call B, complex representation. And our, uh, our generating reflection acts simply on, on V by a multiplication by a primitive root of unity. Okay. Once again, we will uh, work on, uh, on the ring that we denote R, which is just the ring of regular function on V, which inherits the action of W. And here simply, uh, it's a it's polynomial ring, again, with only one uh, variable and now complex coefficient. And my generating reflection S acts on, on the variable, S acts on the variable X by multiplication by theta to the minus one. And here, so the, the ring of uh, invariant polynomial under S are just the polynomial in X to the D. Okay. So, uh, how can I generalize Zergel's uh, story of S2? I remember that in the case of S2, my, uh, my generating bimodule BS was simply uh, the bimodule consisting of uh, polynomials in two variables, real polynomials in two variables, modulo uh, X square equals Y square, okay? So, what I can do here is like now my invariants are, uh, are uh, x to the d, so I can take complex uh, polynomials in two variables, modulo x to the d equals y to the d. Okay. And in this case, again, uh, any polynomial can be uh, written as a sum of a polynomial in xd plus x times polynomial in xd, blah, 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 plus x to the d minus one times a polynomial in xd, which means r as an rs by module is uh, just isomorphic to d copies of rs with, uh, with uh, some shifts appearing depending on the, on the degree of, s, of x. Very well. And now, if I play the same game as before uh, with S2, if I take this generating uh, can bimodule candidate and tensoring with itself, what I guess is just D copy of him with different shifts. Uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, I get no new uh, direct summon appearing when I take tensor products of this uh, candidate, uh, candidate generating by module. So our, our indecomposable of two, up to isomorphism and grading shifts are again just R and my generating by module. And in particular, it's a bit disappointing because it doesn't, it doesn't depend on D. And, uh, and uh, I, can, I can work out from, from this isomorphism, isomorphism the, a presentation of my Grotendi ring. So it's just generated by one element that I denote CS. And uh, when I square it, I, uh, I got back CS with a coefficient that earlier was, was V plus V minus one, and now is just a, a bigger polynomial in V. Okay. So uh, this generalization is not very interesting. So maybe that's not what we should do. Okay, so uh, in, in the case of S2, my reflection was acting on my one dimensional representation by multiplication by minus one. So X square minus Y square was X minus one, Y times X minus minus Y. So why don't I just consider complex polynomial in two variables now? And I, uh, I consider them modulo X minus one times X minus theta Y. Fair enough. And uh, it turns out that uh, here is what is different uh, in between the classical Zergel case and this, uh, these two potential generalization. In the classical Zergel case, 
my, uh, my generating by module, R tensor R over Rs, was isomorphic to the, to the ring of regular function with support E and S, okay? And this is not the case anymore uh, when we go to, uh, to, to cyclic groups. So if I take again R tensor R over Rs, I get the boring story. And this guy is not isomorphic to O of Es, which is the other possible generalization I suggested. And so these guys are two not isomorphic. And, and so let's look up what happens uh, if I take as, genera as generating by module O of Es in the cyclic case. Just before that, let's remark that who is this guy now then in the cyclic case, this R tensor R over Rs, if it's not O of Es, actually it's the ring of regular function with support the whole group, okay? Very good. So, the category we will want to study is, uh, uh, so again, denoted BW, but here W is cyclic group huh? only, not uh, any, any complex reflection. And this is defined to be the Karobi envelope of the additive stable by grading chip monoidal category generated by this O of ES. Okay, so generated by one by module, but we hope we get more structure than with the other boring guy. Okay, so um, we'll consider a set of subsets of W. So this set of subsets will be noted P, and these subsets uh, are what we call cyclically connected, which means um, they, are, they are a specific form. So uh, let's pick two integers in between zero and D minus one, and, and a cyclically connected subset is of the form S to the J, da 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 da, until all the successive power until S to the J plus I. Okay. There's so a little pet on there, right? It should be S to the. Ah, oh, yeah, it should be S to the J, S to the J plus one, da da da, S to the J plus I. Thank you. So, um, how many of those are there? So, if you if you try to um, to to get all of them for the equal three, you will find seven, and uh, these sets are the following. So, you have three uh, of uh, cardinality one three of cardinality two and the whole W. Okay, so seven. And, uh, and more generally, for, uh, for a cyclic group of order D, you have D times D minus one plus one such subsets. Okay, very good. So we keep in mind this, this cyclically connected subset that will play an important role in describing this, um, this generalized category. Okay, so now we want to understand a bit. So we, we know that O of ES, we've described it. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a complex polynomials in two variables modulo X minus Y times X minus data Y. What if I, I, take, a, I take a few more uh, powers of, SI in the, of S in the support? So if I take all the, all the powers of S from zero to i, I can describe uh, my, uh, my ring of regular function, and it's a quotient of, uh, of uh, complex polynomials in two variables, modulo, a polynomial that I call pi xy, which is just the products of uh, x minus uh, zeta ky for k going from zero to i. Okay. And, uh, and now if I take a slightly more complicated um, uh, cyclically connected subset A, which is S to the J da 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 till S to the J plus I, simply I quotient uh, my polynomial ring by PI of zeta to the minus J X Y. Okay, so we, we managed to, to understand completely combinatorially this ring of regular functions. Okay. Uh, again, if I take uh, if I take a, a cyclically connected uh, subset of W, the the ring of regular function 
associated to A, I can, I can see that it's actually isomorphic to O of, uh, to O of Sj times O of E to the Si. And actually these two commute, so it's isomorphic to the tensor product the other way around. Okay, so at the end of the day, what's important is not to understand how all the, all the bimodules associated to all the connect, cyclically connected subsets uh, behave when you tensor them together, but really you want to see how the O of E blah 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 SIs uh, behave when you, when you tensor them together. Okay. Uh, just a, a little particular case. If, uh, if uh, now A is a whole W, and if you plug a W in, in the previous isomorphism we just saw, but we see that, uh, that hitting, uh, hitting W, O of W on the right or on the left by, by uh, the ring of regular function, we support only one element, S to the J, uh, doesn't change anything. Literally, it swallows, uh, it swallows uh, the O of, uh, the O associated, of, uh, associated to a support with only one element. Okay, very good. And, uh, and, and these guys, uh, the, the ring of regular function we support only one element. Actually, if you remember, they are just our twisted by modules. It's R twisted by, by this element on the support. So this, having said that, it's pretty clear that O of S to the I plus J is isomorphic to the tensor product of O to the, of O of S to the I, uh, times O of S to the J, one way or another, they commute. Okay, very good. So we understand a bit, um, a bit the structure of these guys, but now, now eventually we want to, to see what, what's happening when I tensor two, um, two, um, two ring of regular function uh, associated to a, uh, to, uh, with support uh, cyclically connected subset. And for one of them, I will just take a very simple one, not the simplest with only one element because this I already know how, how this behaves, but with, with two elements, E and S. Okay, so if I hit, uh, if I tensor on the left O of E, S, da da da, S to the I with O of E, S, I uh, can prove that uh, this, that this tensor product splits and, uh, I, and the two factors that, uh, the two sounds that come out are first one with one more guy in the support. Now we have S to the I plus one in the support and uh, another one with one less guy in the support, meaning we remove E from the support and, uh, and we have a shift of minus two. Okay. What if uh, now I hit, uh, I, t I tensor O of W with this uh, O of ES, my generating by module on the, on the left, then it spits out two copies of OW, uh, one being shifted by minus two. Okay. Uh, just, I want to, to rewrite the first isomorphism of this proposition in a very particular case uh, when I equals one. So meaning I just uh, take the, the, the square tensor of my generated by module, generating by module of ES. What I get is O of ESS square and the, the by module O of S shifted by, um, by minus two. My, and the bimodule O of S is my twisted bimodule RS. So it's the one that remember in my two questions that I was adding artificially as a generating bimodule to my Zorbel category. And I was wondering what we can tell about this generalized category. So here, I don't, do not need to add it artificially as a generator. As soon as the order of the reflection is bigger than two, it appears as a, as a cement in the square tensor product of my generating by module O of ES. Okay, good. So uh, 
with all this said, we are able to, uh, to understand exactly what, uh, what are the indecomposable objects of, uh, of the category and, uh, and they are exactly parameterized by this uh, cyclically connected subsets of W. Okay, and there are this ring of uh, regular function we support this cyclically connected subsets. So, um, so since we know how many there are, it allows us to say that the Grotenic ring has a, has a module over, uh, over uh, Laurent polynomials in one variable and integer coefficient is free and of rank the number of cyclically connected subsets, which was uh, d, d minus one plus one. Okay, and um, and we can present this Grotendieck ring by generators and relation. So um, so for generators, we choose the ISO class of of uh, O of E blah 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 s to the i shifted by i, and this for all i's from one to d minus one and an extra generator, uh, which is, uh, as an abuse of notation, we denote it S, but it's really the ISO class of the twisted by module or of S, okay? And, uh, and we can present the Grotten decree with those generators and they will satisfy a bunch of relations. So S to the D is, uh, is one. Uh, CI and CJ commute, uh, if uh, i and j, uh, no, not if i and j, for all i and j, and uh, ci's commute with, uh, with the ci's commute with uh, s. So if, if, we, if you stop here, you already see that what you get is a commutative algebra. And we have a bunch of extra uh, relations that come from the isomorphism from the, of the form of proposition, literally. Uh, except that, uh, that now the shifts are included in the generators. So C1 tensor CI is, uh, is just CI plus one plus S times CI minus one for all I from one to D minus two with the convention that uh, C0 is just one. And, um, and, and uh, now the product C1 C D minus one is uh, uh, C D minus one times B plus B to the minus one. And finally, the product S with C D minus one is simply C D minus one. Okay, so we can describe completely uh, the, this category. It's in the composable objects and it's cotton ring. I will not say much more about the cotton ring, just uh, just mention a few other things that uh, actually we can give a presentation with less generators. We can only use S and C1, for example. That um, if you consider V as, a, as not a formal parameter anymore, but uh, a complex number, uh, this uh, C algebra is, uh, is uh, generically semi-simple, except for, uh, for a few values of uh, of V, and uh, and we understand quite well the arm spaces uh, between uh, between two indecomposable objects in this category. Okay, but I will not give much more details because I would like to give a, a, a to to just say a little word about uh, work in progress that concern a diagrammatic description of this generalized category. So uh, as uh, I guess all of you know, uh, in, in the Zergel classical story, we, we have a, a diagrammatic description of, the, of this uh, algebraic uh, category in terms of uh, plan out color diagrams. And, and these diagrams represent some spaces of the category. And this was due first uh, in type A to Elias and Kovanov, and then extended more generally by, uh, by Elias and Williamson to other types. Okay, so I just gave, drew, drew you a, an example here to see how, how they look like. So um, yeah, colored by the, the, they are colored by the simple reflection, of course, of, um, 
of uh, the Coxeter group and uh, we have a bunch of uh, generating uh, diagram morphisms to uh, valent vertex and, uh, and uh, more valent vertex depending on the Coxeter numbers of, uh, of the involved uh, reflections and star dots and dots and uh, trivalent vertex and uh, well, and, and some boxes uh, filled with polynomials floating around in the different region of, uh, of these uh, planar diagrams. And so these diagrams represent actually um, morphisms between, uh, between tensor products of, uh, of our uh, generating Zergel bimodules. Okay, very good. That's about what I will say for the, for the Zergel case. And we would like to generalize this uh, in our cyclic case. So we will have one color because we have one generating by module a priori. And, and so it's really, uh, it's really the beginning of the story of the diagrammatic story for us. So, so we, it's really work in progress. And what I present here, it's the very first step of what we can say. Uh, namely, we want to describe the, the endomorphism algebra of a tensor of a certain fixed tensor power of uh, the generating bimodule B. I, I denoted B now, our, our O of ES, and not any tensor power. Now I will just consider tensor uh, powers that are uh, uh, less than D minus one, okay? And uh, this, this endomorphism algebra, I, I really look for now only uh, to the degree zero endomorphisms of these tensor powers. Okay, so well, let's let's understand a bit uh, what's happening when I when I look up uh, these these uh, successive tensor powers and uh, what uh, how I can decompose them and what uh, what it allows me to say. Okay, so. B to the square, we've, we've seen it already before. It, uh, it decomposes in two summons, O to the o, o of E, S, S square, and my twisted by module O of S shifted by minus two. Now, if I, tens, uh, I tensor one more time, go to the power three, I again have uh, O of E, S, S square, but now S three. I add one more guy to the, to the support. And, uh, and I have only a second summon, but this time of multiplicity two, which is O of S S square shifted by minus two. If I go to the power four, I get always the biggest one. I order them by size of support. So O of E S S square three S four. Uh, then the guy where I truncate uh, the support on the right, left and on the right, I have three copies of this one. And I again, once again truncate the support on the left and on the right. I am left with O of S2. I added minus two to the shift and I have two copies of this guy. So let's, let's put that in, in a little table. Uh, it looks like that. So here we've done it until four. I added, uh, I, I add, I added the multiplicity for, uh, for n equals five, six, and seven. So here, these numbers appearing in the table are the different the multiplicities of the of the different summons uh, appearing in the decomposition of B to the tensor n. So uh, uh, actually, we can we can say it, we can we can work it out in full generality how this B to the tensor n decomposes, and uh, we have a recursive formula for these multiplicities, which is given here. Uh, on the right. Okay, and um, if you look at them very closely and at, at this uh, recursive formula, and actually if you tilt a bit your head to the, to the left, you will recognize a generalized Catalan triangle, actually, the OEYS number I put on the slide. And, uh, and so alpha i n, the multiplicity, is just C of n minus i i, these generalized Catalan numbers. And uh, we can see it because they have, uh, they have the same recursive formula, and, uh, but, but they, they have a, a close, uh, close definition as well that I gave here. Okay, so the multiplicities that appear in the decomposition of the tensor powers of B are some generalized Catalan numbers. Very well. 
and uh, and in this decomposition so now we we want to understand the maps between the different uh, summons appearing in the decomposition to understand the endomorphism algebra and uh, we must see that there are no degree zero maps between two different uh, indecomposable summons and that for one fixed summon the only uh, up to scalar uh, degree zero endomorphism is the identity so at the end of the day the complex dimension of this uh, degree zero on the morphism algebra of b to the tensor n is the sum of the square of the multiplicities of the summons appearing. Okay, and these multiplicities we, rem we remember that they are generalized Catalan numbers, and actually this generalized Catalan triangle, the shallow diagonal. If you sum up the square, you get the usual Catalan number. So. Here you until you head and you just sum up the squares of the of the multiplicities and you get your Catalan numbers. So we have an algebra. We know its dimension, its Catalan number n, and we want to describe it as a diagram algebra. And uh, what's your favorite diagram algebra, which has dimension Catalan n? It's the Tamperlelib algebra. So for n uh, less or equal than d minus one, it turns out that this endomorphism algebra is actually isomorphic to the temporally lib algebra with uh, with parameter delta, so the value of uh, of the of the circle uh, is given by zeta uh, one half plus zeta minus one half. So it's a temporally lib algebra at root of unity, and the usually uh, cup cup uh, generators of the Temperative algebra correspond to um, to delta times uh, identity of b to the i minus one tensor p tensor identity of b to the n minus one y minus i minus one, where p that I that I diagrammatically uh, drew as a as a crossing like that is just uh, the projection of uh, the projection in injection of uh, b square to this uh, twisted by module summon o of s shifted by minus two so i had no space to add thank you on this slide but i will stop here and i thank you very much for attending very nice that. um are there questions Okay. Uh, uh, Kovano asked if, the, if there's a preprint available, and I think the answer is yes, right? It's already in the archive. Uh, so it's a, a, the, the, all the algebraic part is published, yeah? And, uh, but the diagrammatics, no, there is no preprint. Uh, there are lots of notebooks full of dirty computations, but, uh, but for the diagrammatics, there is no preprint and uh, it's not going to be very soon. But uh, we are making progress. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, it's very interesting to see. And of course, your relations, uh, sort of the, your Dirac Sunday compositions uh, seem reminiscent of some kind of distributed SLT or quantum SLT. The mm -hmm. relations help with additional shifts by this automorphism object as of finding other. Mm. Yeah, look, looks very interesting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can Question. I? Ask? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, it, do you know of a relation between your category and the um, zergal bimodules for dihedral groups? I uh, just uh, the algebra seems to appear. No. I mean, no, actually, yeah. no, I, uh, I don't see any, no, hmm. uh, but I haven't given it much thought, but, uh, but I don't see any. Hmm. Hmm. But Ben, so what are this, what are the relations in the bidecidal case? You don't have SL2, right? Well, you have, um, you have SL2 appearing in the sort of singular circle by modules. I mean, this is sort of the, what, Quantum geometric Satake tells you that the temple leaf algebra appears when you look at singular zergal bimodules, and this has a shadow in zergal bimodules. So in dihedral groups, you see the same sort of Catalan triangle appear when you're doing VSPT, VSPT, VSPT. Mm -hmm. 
So like maybe there's a relationship between the cyclic group appearing as a rotation inside the dihedral yeah. group, but that's, but it's, it's not immediately obvious how that would work. Maybe my question is related to the previous one, but what happens when D goes to infinity? Like what you said, uh, is there any when, meaning to the limit? In the cyclic when, group of order infinity. Yeah, well, uh, then you don't have like the, more or less you forget about the, the big guys, the O of W somehow. And, uh, and, uh, and actually it, you, you're, uh, you're much better to describe it diagrammatically because the, 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 the problem to, to describe diagrammatically this category is when you hit uh, the, the tensor power uh, corresponding to the order of your reflection, then you have different copies of O of W that appears with different shifts. And then you have new uh, degree zero more endomorphism uh, in between different summons. And it's, uh, it's quite a mess. Is it related to this uh, affine Zergo category, like you know, A2 head, A1 head or something? Uh, the the one for cyclic groups. Uh, yeah, when D goes to infinity, do you see something? When D goes to infinity, D, 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 I I don't know. I haven't thought really about that. I, I guess my version of that question is is this, and because um, sorry, I don't have to sneeze. This is a bad time. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The, the um um, because when you have this a two result earlier, you add this extra, yeah. Yeah. Add this extra reflection, and the, and then you get um some quotient of a two tilde. Yeah. Um, if you did this for a one, and this is the d equals two case of this, for d equals two, there's a difference because there is an extra reflection that you add. Um, yeah. For d two to get your version of this story for that for d two, and so you get something three dimensional instead of two dimensional. Yeah, exactly. And is this a quotient of a one tilde in that case? Uh, yeah, that's exactly like, yeah, that's what yeah. I, think I, I don't know. I, I, at the top of my head, I, I cannot tell, but uh, yeah, okay, I see, I see what you mean. But at the top of my head, I cannot tell. I have hmm. another question. Can you do a generic case where your psi is not a lot of unity? It's just, maybe that's the same as, um, Previous question: If your psi is not a lot of unity, it's just generic number. Yeah. By modules, do you get some kind of not so simple thickening of representations of SL two? If uh, you, and you don't have periodicity, then don't have cyclicity. If, if your psi is not a lot of unity, you can just yeah. and get arbitrary chains, arbitrary connected chains from my yeah. y plus j. Yeah. Maybe another thing to consider. Yeah, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really thought about that. The, the, so one, one thing that we figure out uh, is that, uh, uh, well, it, it's, it's not really related to your question, but one thing what, that we figure out is uh, as a quotient of, uh, of the Grotenic ring of our category, we recover uh, the Grotenic ring of, of, uh, of, uh, a uh, the the a quotient of the stable category of the Drinfeld double of the of the Taft uh, algebra, which is uh, the positive uh, Borel of UQSL two, and uh, and so so the description of the the Grotenic ring of uh, of this category uh, is uh, is uh, in a paper of uh, of Bonafé and Rouquier, and and uh, we we observe that. Uh, that uh, we can get it as a as a quotient of, uh, of the botanic ring of our category. Thank you. It is not related to your question, but uh, that's yeah, just a, a small remark uh, that uh, that came back to me. I'm just wondering if there's a relationship. Um, and so if some of these are questions are answered by taking the dihedral group, the infinite dihedral group, some realization mm -hmm. though, where S and T really are the same reflection. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> like you can take some, ver you know, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, could be. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's also my question because we have the paper with left where we have this cyclotomic uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Serbo okay. by model, you can get some version of it. I wonder what it's yeah. related. Yeah, I'll, I'll look it up then. Yeah. Uh, one, one other. Um, so this heck, this this you you're defined basically by the Gerstenberg group of this category, some weird heck algebra sort of ish thing. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. A, actually, it's actually, it's a it's a it's a you you recover the heck algebra. Uh, by 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 quotienting by uh, s equals one, you recover uh, the the algebra associated to the to the complex reflection group. Yeah. Right. Um, this this there's no standard basis of this thing. You have the casualistic basis, clearly, mm -mm -mm. But not a, like a standard yeah. basis that you know. But it has like a map to the sort of standard heck algebra. Uh, not that I know of. No. Okay. Mm. I have a I have a question. Yeah. Um, you said that you know everything about Homs between indecomposables in this category, yeah. and this is just coming from some, the trace pairing on K zero, or uh, no, no, really not, okay. not not at all. It's because this uh, this uh, this uh, indecomposables are uh, really the O of uh, of A for any A cyclically connected, and this you have a full description as a quotient of polynomial rings of those. And so you can just work, work it out. So for example, the home space um, uh, in between O of A and O of B, for A and B, two cyclically connected subsets, uh, will be uh, a free module of rank given by the, the cardinality of the intersection of A and B. And we can give a basis of, uh, of, uh, of this home space as our module, for our module. <coughs> It, how do you see the grading? Or, mm -hmm. I mean, what are the degree shifts when you intersect A and B? Do you mean the degree shifts? You say you I give a free basis, but what's the graded rank of that basis? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, you'll have, uh, how, how does that work again? Um, I don't, I, if there is so the, so, so the basis so, so the basis element of the of the will have degree from uh, two times uh, the cardinality of b uh, minus a up to this plus uh, cardinality of a intersecting with b minus one two times a, uh, a cardinality of A intersecting B minus one. So, yeah. There's a question in the chat, um, mm -hmm. which I should read. Two, 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 two. Uh, where do I get the chat? Ah, conversation, up. Combinatorially, is there a description in terms of planar perfect matchings or can the representations be described in terms of subsets of set value tableaus? Uh, so I, 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 I guess you mean the description of the this endomorphism algebra? Yeah. Instead of the, the set of generators I've chosen, which are these four valent crossings, like uh, get, getting really the, the cup and cup generator. I don't know if, if that's what you mean. But, but um, so I will just rebound on, on this question to say something about that. So here I, I, uh, I really um, chose deliberately not to, to have the EI as a, as a the, the, the cap cup generator of the temporary Lilba algebra as diagrams for for our uh, for uh, for our case because they suggest that it factored through R which is not the case here the generating morphism are really uh, factoring through R twisted by R uh, by S and not R so that's why the the EI generators of the temporary Lilb are are not really suitable for uh, for the description because they they uh, they put you on the wrong uh, trail, suggesting that you you factor through R. And um, 
so I, I certainly haven't, haven't answered the question, but then I just want to say something else. So in the aim of generalizing this uh, diagrammatics, so a priori you only need one color diagrams, but uh, to, to make your life easy, uh, you might want to have, uh, to have oriented diagrams, which means as generating by module, you might want to add the adjoint of O of ES, which is uh, O of S to the D minus one E, maybe with a shift, probably with shifted by minus two or something. And, uh, and, uh, and then your, uh, your diagrammatic, in, it, will be, it will be cyclic if you add this adjoint and your diagrams will now be oriented. So, so well, we are, we are exploring different directions, but one of the direction uh, to go is really adding, adding the adjoint of O of ES, because in the, in the classical case, they were self-adjoint. And, uh, and now, now they are not self-adjoint anymore, so you can add this adjoint as generating by modules, and then your diagrammatics get oriented. So, but that's, that's one trail that we have started to explore very slowly. That's very interesting. Uh, can I ask one more question here? Or did... yeah. uh, so, um, do you, so this may be related to a comment Ben made earlier, but are there rookie complexes in this context? Like, can you categorify the standard basis with complexes? Uh, 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 we haven't we haven't looked at uh, looked at that um, at all, but uh, I don't see any obstruction in uh, in uh, in defining rookie complexes. And uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, then at the end of the day, I'm I'm not quite sure what you get, but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, we we you could totally go to the homotopy category and see what what happens. Yes. It would be uh, interesting to see if you like what kind of cyclotomic relation you get or something. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I do want to point out that um, I believe Rina Anno has looked at Rukier complex like things in this setting. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the info. Okay. Cool. All right. This looks like a good place to thank Anwar again. Thank you. And um, we'll stop the video.